This is David Dimbleby talking to Mr. Wilson a few, an hour or so ago. Early this morning, you refused to concede that the election was lost. Do you now accept that the chance of your being Prime Minister by this evening is very remote? Since we spoke, uh, the Conservatives have now gained enough seats to make it extremely likely that they will have an, abs uh, an overall absolute majority in the House of Commons, certainly. Uh, but I shall follow the precedent of my predecessor, Sir Alec Douglas Hume, and uh, make a formal statement about it when they have passed the majority figure, as happened in 1964. I didn't claim a, a victory then until that figure was reached, and I shall treat it in the same way as he did. But to all intents and purposes, you've now given up any hope? Of... Well, I think the figures speak for themselves. When do you expect to go to the palace? That I don't know. Could we look at the campaign just for a moment? What are your feelings this morning towards Mr Heath? Did you admire him as an opponent? You know, I've always admired him, and I've said this a number of times, much more than uh, many other people, even in his own party. I've always felt that if he could be himself and not have to be pushed around by publicity people and so on, uh, that uh, he would have come through very much earlier and much more clearly. Uh, as uh, an opponent in the uh, election, I didn't uh, very much like his style on many questions, and, uh, you know, I spoke out very clearly about his attempt to drag Sterling into the campaign. But still, the, the campaign is over now. Was that uh, part of election invective, or do you think we're going to have as Prime Minister a man who would, in fact, act in an anti-British way, which I think is what you said about him? I said, uh, I referred that to the campaign only, that he was doing that in order to win votes. That's a different thing. But uh, assuming he takes over, he will have the strongest economic position any prime minister has taken over in living memory. I said that in my broadcast the other evening that I was fighting it against the strongest economic position. He will take over the strongest economic position uh, that any prime minister could wish to have. So you, you, you still don't think that even under the Conservatives there'll be any danger of a recession in the autumn and of trouble in the autumn? I wasn't talking about recession, I was talking about the balance of payments. Uh, what there is in relation to a recession on the one hand or inflation on the other depends on policy. Depends on their policies and they haven't made clear what their policies will be but now of course they would have to do that. What would you have done differently in the campaign with the hindsight of admittedly only I, six hours? Well I've hardly, yes, uh, of which some, of, some part of this has been spent in sleep though not enough yet. Um, I don't think at this stage I would have changed it very much. I think, uh, obviously, we were up against something that no one foresaw. I don't think the Conservatives did. Uh, the press certainly didn't. Uh, and that was, I think, that enough people stayed at home, perhaps because they felt there wasn't enough difference between the parties, perhaps because uh, the improvement in our economic position and in other ways hadn't erased all the scars from the tough things we had to do to get that strong economic position. And uh, it was a low poll, and a low poll was bound to count against us. All you, the signs were of a high pole. Do you feel let down by, by your traditional working class supporters no, in that they well, didn't go to the polls? I haven't seen any analysis yet, and it's much too early to hold an inquest. Uh, I think some people did stay at home. I don't know who they were. But by any standards, it was an ideal day for a oh, Labour yes. turnout. Oh, I mean, yes. an hour extra at the polls and the effort, fine yes. sunshine. And the fine and weather and, and everything was uh, ideal. And there were all the signs, not only in my own constituency yesterday, but uh, earlier throughout the campaign. And I think that was the reason. Do you think the Conservative claim and their bid they made in the last three days towards the housewives may have something behind it? Do you think that the housewives perhaps didn't vote on traditional Oh, patterns? I don't think it was the bid in the last uh, three days particularly, but of course they did exploit the cost of living uh, question. They gave the impression that they would stop the rises in the cost of living. Well, now they maybe have a chance to show whether they can or not. So you accept that people... I think believe it was, what I the think Conservatives it was said and not, and not what you said. It's, fact, always an issue. it's always an issue. Like, well, of course, there were the facts of the rising prices. I don't think they were sufficiently impressed by uh, the steps we have taken to hold them down as far as is possible when world prices are rising. And so they wanted to kick out at somebody. But in essence, their role for that is, a gov is fulfilled by the government. In essence, they accepted the warnings that the Conservatives are putting forward about the economy rather than your more optimistic view I don't, no, I don't think the warnings about the economy. I think prices were more of an issue and, and the promises of taxation, uh, taxation reductions. And of course, uh, it's, a, it's a natural thing. It's happened in other countries. Do you think perhaps that your, your election was, was too hastily called before our economic strength, which you were talking about, had actually become enough of a reality and a long enough reality for people really to believe in it in the way that you... 
did No, I don't think so. I considered a good deal whether we should have a summer election or wait till later. Uh, the economic situation was neutral, that it was, <clears throat> I was assured by everyone who knew that it would be as good in uh, the autumn, in October, as in June. But um, uh, the electioneering had reached such a pitch, it was beginning to have a, a, an effect on many uh, areas of industry and trade, and so I felt it right to have the election then. When you say you were assured it would be all right in the autumn, you mean that was a factor in your options for either the autumn or June? Well, I asked the Chancellor of the Exchequer, speaking as Chancellor, would you say it's more favourable in, in October than now, or, or more favourable now than it would be in October? Do you see any, anything coming to make it less favourable? He said it's absolutely neutral between the two. But that was an and electoral... therefore I had to take deci the decision, uh, in other words, I was free to take the decision on quite other grounds. But that was an electoral judgment that he was making about whether the economy would be suitable for a general election no, to be held. No, it, uh, it was. I asked him to give me a certificate as Chancellor of the Exchequer, in effect, from his judgment and all the advice open to him, and he said it will be as strong in October as it is now. What is, is very intriguing about the choice of date is that you've always had a, a reputation for very sure timing and for a for a, an ability to sense the public's mood. Uh, you failed this time, obviously. Well, because as I say, for four years there had been the uh, feelings, the very uh, high support, or loss of support by us. Uh, and of course, there had been four years of persistent denigration and even distortion of what we were doing. That made more of an impact, left more of a scar, as I said, than uh, I think anyone could have foreseen at the time. Do you expect? I don't think there was a single newspaper at the time, for example, took the view that it was wrong to, to go in June. Do you expect criticism now from within your own party? Oh, there'll always be criticism, but I think the whole party was united in thinking June was right. Certainly, I had the full support of all my colleagues when I consulted them. Do you think there'll be any kind of challenge to your leadership? No. You're absolutely confident of yes. that? Yes despite the rumours of the sorts of challenges that there were meant to be taking place this time last year? That was in a different situation, uh, and they failed to get off the ground. No one could find more than six supporters, and there were always some disgruntled people in the party. People who'd been left out of governments who thought they should be in it. Uh, people who'd been dropped from government. Could we move on to a, a, a more personal plane? I, I followed you down the motorway this morning, and as the sun came up at about half past three, it was rather beautiful and cold and it must have been a rather gloomy moment for you. What were your feelings as you spent that four and a half hours in the back of I your car? I was still listening to the radio until four o'clock, so I had plenty to think about till four o'clock, and as soon as uh, the radio was turned off, I went straight to sleep and woke up, uh, oh, only about six or seven miles from Downing Street. So you've not yet reflected on oh, what's I've happened? Oh, I've been reflecting a bit, yes. What have your feelings been? Well, naturally, disappointment, because uh, I believe we have done a good job, and I think a lot of people in the country think so. What regrets do you have about uh, leaving office? Oh, the big one is the, the, the uh, fact that we can't now, presumably we can't now, do everything we wanted to do to use this economic strength to uh, continue and intensify and develop and accelerate what we're doing in for example, the social services and in other ways. Do you think that policies that you've put through will be undone under the new government? That must be a matter for them. Do you think... From the all they've said, you would think so. Yes, which policies? Well, take development areas for a start, which is the big problem of unemployment. The major unemployment problem today is still the problem of development areas. They've made it clear they would dismantle many of those policies. Others too. But in the area of things left undone, it's mainly the economic things that oh, no. you feel... Oh, no. No. Of course, one doesn't know what the economic policy would be because we heard a lot after Sells and Park, but then, of course, in the election campaign, that was all muted and we heard very little about what they were going to do. Nobody in the social services, too. One would gather they would have different priorities in the health service, for example. But do you have... Um... Education, obviously, our uh, sustained campaign to end the 11-plus election will not be pursued with the same vigour. And those are matters of political regret or personal regret? Person or both? Well, both political and personal. I mean, you're here to do the sort of job that is carried through the things you believe in. I wanted to end that. There were many other things I wanted to end. What's your own political plan now uh, to go into very fierce and active opposition? I wish to see what there is to oppose. We sh uh, one thing is uh, <coughs> quite clear, and I can say this right away. We shall not play politics with sterling. We shall not play politics with the economy. We shall support anything that uh, can be supported, that seems reasonable to us, but wrecking policies or doctrinaire policies, we should take a different view about. But we're certainly not going to rush into any uh, uh, rip-roaring political campaign. 
so that you'll be playing it politically on the political scene, you'll be playing it quiet right, for, wait. The, for, no, the, for the time wait. being. We must wait to see what their policies are. What are you going to do for the rest of today? I shall be meeting my colleagues at the moment. We're trying to find out how many are in London. Uh, and uh, I shall presumably be going to check us this evening. Can I ask you again how you feel at this moment, now that you have in effect said that uh, the election is last? Well, I've answered it. Anything special you want to add to it? Well, you answered it in terms of... Uh, Disappointment, I said first, and then you said why, and I answered now. Had you anything particular in mind? Do you I'll feel, try and answer it. Do you feel uh, in your own mind uh, that you've either misjudged the time or misjudged the electorate or fought the campaign in the wrong way, which a lot of people not really. now, with yes. hindsight, are saying... It's too did. early, of course, to, to form a judgment on these things. As to timing, uh, I think uh, the odds would have been just as great that if I decided to wait till the autumn we'd lost then, people would have said what a fool he was to uh, refuse to go in June. I, I...